Hi guys, uh, welcome back. This is my uh, second video on painting George Washington and his horse. Um, if you missed the whole horse painting bit, please check out my tutorial from last week. I will link to it in the description box. There's also going to be more information there on the figure and just a general introduction to this whole process. So right, let's get right into it. Uh, I have already painted uh, George's uh, face and hands here off camera as I often do with figures because you know, I do it so often you don't need to see it every single time. So what I'm gonna move on to now is working on all of the uh, buff areas on his uniform which are quite substantial when we're talking about an American Revolutionary War general. Their uniforms were generally sort of this buff color with blue. It's actually a very pretty uniform in my opinion. So I am basically in those areas here with a mixture of Vallejo khaki gray and Vallejo buff, about 50-50, though it doesn't matter a whole lot. Um, you're going to need to paint his pants in this case, and then all of the facings and turn backs on his jacket are all going to be this color, and also um, his waistcoat underneath, it's also the buff color. Because we're working over black, you're going to have to go back in and apply a couple of layers and build it up just so that you can get a strong enough uh, color. I'm only going to start highlighting. My first highlight here is just going to be pure buff. It's, it's pretty thin here so that I can kind of blend it easily and also build it up a little bit on areas that I want lighter, but that's just the basic gist of it. So you can see I'm just going to be applying it sort of first to the areas that I know I want to be the brightest and then sort of blending it out. That's especially going to be the case like on his pants. And for example, you want to apply a lot of it to the top and then sort of blend it downwards and then probably apply a couple more layers to get it just a more solid looking color on those really light areas. Um, there's not a lot to say here. It's not very complicated what I'm doing. Mostly it's just being careful where you apply the paint because you've got so many fine little detail areas. There's not a ton of room for blending and you just need to mostly be careful that you're getting the paint in the right spot and still leaving that darker color uh, sort of in between the different areas so that you can help you know clearly define the different spaces. Now I'm just highlighting again. Now I've mixed a bit of white into my buff to lighten it up. And you can see I'm just kind of, again, just going back over those places. And now you can see I'm really focusing on the tops of any creases or folds and really just defining those areas here um, and really you know, just smoothing it into the darker shades that I've already uh, got. And as always, you're gonna probably need a couple of layers in some places to build up enough uh, brightness on the model. My final highlight on the buff now is just actual almost pure white, but just with a hint of the uh, buff in it to get it a little bit more, you know, tonally similar. And now I'm just going to apply that really as an edge highlight very carefully because I don't want it to get too light and then just kind of again blend it into the uh, darker shades here you know where I feel like I need to where I'm you know applying it is more than just an edge highlight really. Next I'm going to be working on the rest of the coat and I'm using really the same blues that I used in his saddle cloth because they should really match. So I'm starting out here with a base coat of uh, dark Prussian blue mixed with black. You can see it's so dark that you could really almost not even see that it's distinct from our base coat. My next highlight here is just going to be the dark Prussian blue, maybe with just slightly darker with black, but you almost don't even have to. As a matter of fact, if you do darken it down and try to apply it, the contrast is going to be so slight, you're probably going to actually have some trouble seeing what you're doing. So I don't even necessarily recommend that. But I'm going to take this dark Prussian blue now, and I'm going to start applying it to areas where more light is heading, as you would expect, and, you know, sort of blending it out as I work, just, you know, very carefully. 
I've now taken just a little bit of normal Prussian blue and used it to lighten my dark Prussian blue. Not too much yet because I want this to be very gradual what I'm doing. I'm going to kind of gradually build up shades and I'm going to now just continue emphasizing areas of highlight. I'm, at this point I'm really going to start focusing on uh, sharp creases, sort of the tops of sharp creases and fold the tops of his uh, sleeves and his elbows and really all those wrinkles really define them so that we have these sharp kind of cut creases that sort of uh, transition between you know this really light highlighted fold and then sort of the dark shadow right next to it so there's going to be a lot of actually sharp edges here there's actually not too much blending you're going to have to worry about here because there are so many folds in the fabric the only real places that's going to be an issue is probably where it kind of transitions to under the arms or into those deep shadow areas but in the sort of the lit areas you're not going to have to blend too terribly much i continue then with just even more of the uh Prussian blue mixed into my dark Prussian blue to really emphasize the tops of the creases again like I was doing before. I'm also at this point going to start emphasizing seams in the coat because the sculpting on this jacket is such that you can really see the seams that divide the main body of the jacket from the sleeves and also just sort of seam details along the back which is really a common feature of these 18th century coats and I really like to emphasize it when I'm painting especially in this high contrast style so once you get up to these <coughs> higher highlight colors you can start sort of fine lining not just the tops of the creases, but lightly just along one edge of those seams just to emphasize those really different pieces of fabric. I'm then gonna finish off the jacket by taking almost pure uh, Prussian blue here. And I've got it good and thin because the Prussian blue is a very light color and you need to be careful with it in this context because you don't want your jacket to get too light blue because that'll kind of spoil the effect. So I'm applying it very thinly and relying on the transparency, you know, for all that dark blue to show through. And I'm just going to go back in one final time to really emphasize the lightest folds and the areas where I want there to be a real strong highlight. And of course, as I said before, along all those sort of seams at the back of his coat. Now I'm going to worry about the white and gray areas of the uniform. There are not too many you have to deal with here, thankfully but I like to try to cover them all at once. Now, he's got a little bit of sort of white on sort of his sore that I'm gonna be doing, and also, uh, very crucially, around um, his neck. He's got sort of a white um, tie on white undershirt that I'm gonna be painting, uh, and also his hair. Now, his hair uh, is powdered, but I want it to be tonally a little different than the other white areas, so I'm base coating with a darker color. I've used neutral gray as the base coat on the hair, whereas I'm taking a sky gray and using that to base coat the other white areas that I just mentioned uh, previously. Once I've got that base coat on, highlighting the white is very much similar to what we did on the horse. So I'm going to first take a 50-50 white sky gray mixture and apply it on those areas to highlight it and then go over it finally with just pure white and build up a couple layers to my white is saturated enough. But we're dealing with such tiny areas here that should not be too tricky to do at all. You should be able to do it, accomplish it really quickly. With the hair, I'm going to be a little bit more um, careful. So I'm going to start out first with a highlight that is a mixture of the neutral gray and the sky gray and then just go up to uh, pure sky gray on the hair uh, really and you can see I'm just focusing it really on those areas where more light is heading and really uh, blending it out um, you can then go ahead and take maybe some just pure sky gray or a mix of sky gray and white and use it to really a sort of a really final emphasis kind of pick out some strands and all those areas where there's divisions in his hair like between the curls and stuff and kind of lightly do that the main thing is you want to just make sure that his hair um, is distinct looking from the other white areas and you want it to look just a little bit darker you want it to have a little bit of a different tone not only because that will make the figure look more interesting but also a lot of pictures I saw of George Washington uh, his hair kind of was powdered but it was it kind of had this more darker more silver silvery color and it was less really bright white it wasn't this really really stark colored wig it was a more sort of silver grayer shade if that makes sense 
I decided to do a couple areas of the uniform using brown leather and those are going to include his uh, sword scabbard though you could do that in black if you wanted but i wanted brown just for variety and the tops of his boots again those could also be black but you sometimes will see these boots in two tones so black bottom and then a brown cuff and i personally just like the look of that a little bit better because there's so much black and gray in this figure already and i just want to bring in some more and more colors and the brown complements that buff shade real nice so i'm going to be using those so i'm base coating those areas first with german camouflage black brown and then i'm going to apply sort of a general kind of big highlight using chocolate brown over top of that and then in order to highlight it's going to be really like just what i did on the horse tack so i'm going to go ahead and take and mix some beige brown into my chocolate brown and apply that sort of along the edges again just lightly and kind of blending in and just also a bit more where there'd be light hitting it's real easy to see where light's hitting on this figure because he's already sitting on the horse you can really get a sense of where light is and where there's going to be these clear shadows and i'm just going to finish with a, an edge highlight which is just pure uh, beige brown real lightly sort of along those edges of some of those those brown leather pieces to find them and you can even add in a little Iraqi sand at the end if you want to for an even more extreme highlight, but I don't even know if it's strictly necessary. You get a pretty good amount of contrast just with these colors. Now the next big area that needs to be covered is uh, the black and gray elements. Um, and so I'm starting out with my black base coat in those areas there's various things that need to be done here you're going to want to do the rest of his boots you're going to need to paint his uh, the sort of the straps on his stirrups he's got also some black sort of reins he's kind of holding his hand you'll need to do those um, his hat of course very very important um, the bow that he's got to tie his hair and then last but not least that thing in his hand which I think is a riding crop uh, those are I believe generally leather or something similar uh, I don't think it matters a lot you could have probably done this in brown as well that might have been a nice choice but since i'd already finished with the brown i thought i would go ahead and do it in black as well just easier so i'm bit i am applying the black paint there too also there's these little uh, sort of loops at the sort of tops of his boots they kind of fall down over the brown area and don't forget to uh, paint those in the black as well Now I'm just going to start highlighting the black and I'm using the same sort of general process I used on the horse's tack. So I'm starting out here with German gray, which I'm going to apply pretty liberally to most of those areas, just really only avoiding uh, sort of deep shadows or sort of areas where I want to sort of define kind of sort of a division between different pieces. Then I'm going to mix in some neutral gray into that German gray and sort of continue highlighting further picking out the different areas. Now, you're gonna be one of, especially careful when you're painting these hats. These hats are kind of these big, smooth surfaces, so getting a smooth blend and keeping the color subtle on these is really, really important. Um, so, I'm gonna just be real careful what I do. I'm really gonna apply the paint thinly, really blend it out, really watch it. You know, apply several layers if you need to. Um, just emphasize the areas where the hat is sort of coming forward and sticking out and you don't have to really apply any paint at all down in the recesses then i'm going to just go back and take just almost some pure neutral gray and just continue picking things out uh, even further on the hat you can see how i'm making another sort of higher highlight towards the top and just kind of carefully blending it out and with the hat i'm not going to highlight any further than this because as i said it needs to stay subtle you don't want it to look too shiny or get too gray looking but with the leather and some of the other areas you can get a little bit shinier so then i'm going to just mix some sky gray into the neutral gray and just use that to start getting some extra sort of high highlights shiny areas on the leather straps along the edges on his kind of his boots and the like and you can also be doing this not only on his hair bow but on the little cockade on his hat because those areas would have been sort of silk which means they would have been shinier so it's okay if you want to put some higher highlights there even going up to just pure sky gray if you want and as a matter of fact i actually think it looks really good because you can get this kind of shiny effect on those areas which i think is very very attractive you know and just add some interest and texture to the whole thing now i'm going to be painting his epaulets 
which would have been gold. And I'm gonna handle it in the same way that I handled the border on his saddle cloth. So I'm base coating them here with German camouflage black brown. Then I'm going to take some Citadel Averlen Sunset, which I've got pretty thin, and I'm gonna apply that lightly over the surface, just kind of taking care to maintain the uh, dark brown sort of down in the divisions between sort of the braid and fringe and all that kind of thing. And you can, again, build it up a little bit. And as a matter of fact, I recommend you do because it'll mean you get a bigger range of color when you're finished. Then and to highlight that, just take some Vallejo Buff and sort of go back over it again and pick out really along all the edges and along the, the bits of fringe to make it look a little bit shinier and uh, brighter. And then, and then again, just finish that whole process off with some white, with just a little bit of the buff mixed in it and just apply some real thin lines of that just along the very top edges and just little dots along the fringe just to give it uh, the sort of illusion of a little bit of sparkle and a little bit of shine. Now one of the things that's left to do is this sort of sash that he's wearing. Uh, the uh, American officers use these to help sort of identify their rank and George Washington very famously wore a light blue sash. I'm not completely sure, but I think he might have actually been the only one who wore that particular color, I don't know. But anyway, to make this, I'm gonna start out by taking some Prussian blue and mixing in some white to make a sort of a light uh, pastel color. I'm gonna apply that as a base coat. And then to highlight, all I'm gonna do is just keep adding white into it to get lighter and lighter shades of blue. And you can see I'm focusing the lighter shade to the middle and sort of blending it outwards and just in progressive layers. And along the edge, I'm gonna add a very white, very pale blue as an edge highlight. But if you do that well, you can see, you're gonna get kind of a shiny effect. And that's good because this would have been sort of a silk or satin fabric. And it'll look nice and it'll give just a nice, again, another nice textural element to the whole figure. Now there's still a whole bunch of little metal but buttons and fittings and stuff that need to be done on his uniform. I'm pretty sure that all the buttons and stuff here would have been a gold or brass in his case. Um, so I've mixed up a base coat for those areas. That's a mixture of German camouflage black, brown, and Citadel uh, Jenna gold. And I'm just gonna be very careful to pick out all of his buttons here. <laughs> there are a lot of them, so pay attention that you don't forget any. I almost always, when I'm painting these kind of uniforms with all the buttons, I indubitably forget a few of them and have to go back in. In this case, you're also gonna wanna make sure you get his sword and the hardware on his sword, the scabbard, all that kind of stuff. They, those also would have this brass sort of shiny type thing going on and so they also need to be uh, given attention. Once you've got your base coat in you can then go back in on on the uh, sword uh, hardware particularly and apply a highlight of just pure Jenna Gold though I, I would be very careful with that because the Jenna Gold I've noticed is a very very red gold almost unnaturally so which makes it a little bit tricky to use so um, I would be a little bit wary of that. And you, in any case, you certainly don't need to do that on the buttons. They almost always only need two highlights. You know, you can just go from a very dark up to a very light color and that works fine. And the way I'm making that light color is I'm gonna take the Jenna Gold and I'm gonna mix some Vallejo Air Silver into it. And I'm gonna use that kind of grayish, kind of bronze kind of color you can see there, it's sort of a red silver color, and I'm gonna use that to just highlight all the buttons. All you have to do is go back over them lightly, apply it, and it'll make them look extra shiny, but it won't take away the sort of gold, sort of base coat either. And you can see I'm being, doing an extra lot on the hardware because I was like, oh, this got so red, and I didn't really want it to be quite that red, so I was using that more silvery color to help you know, tone that down a little bit. There's very little um, sort of steel that needs to be painted in this model, but I did decide that I would do his stirrups in that color. So I'm base coating them here with a mixture of German gray and gunmetal. And then I'm just gonna do a real quick rough highlight with pure gunmetal, followed with a, by an edge highlight of Vallejo Air Steel to get a little extra shine on them. Okay, so here is our completed General George Washington figure on his horse. 
You may notice looking at this figure that it looks really, really matte now, com uh, kind of compared to how it did in the last step. And that is because I applied some matte varnish to it. And I did that because several of the steps, several of the colors were kind of shiny. They didn't dry as matte as I would have liked. And that was not an attractive effect. So I decided I would put matte varnish on it to kind of give it a nice finish. I used a Winsor & Newton matte artist spray varnish here and I was really happy with the results. So if you're looking for a good matte spray varnish, I recommend you try that one. I think this figure turned out really nice though. I'm happy with it. Um, it was not, considering that it was a mounted figure, it actually did not take too much time to do. Again, it, it suffers from some of the problems I think that of all the Perry figures, the sculpting is a little it's a little rough. It's very impressionistic. It's really nice looking, but at the same time, it, there's a sort of a roughness to it, um, which can make you know, you know, getting a really nice, smooth finish a little bit tricky. But I, I still think it's nonetheless very appealing, despite that. And and you know, I think it has the colors here are very appealing and really make for a nice figure. So if you enjoyed this video, please like it, uh, share it as always, leave me your comments with what you thought, and remember to subscribe to my channel if you have not done so already. Um, so that is all for now, and I will see you next time.